Hi and welcome to another episode of PeaceMeg TV. In today's Reaper tutorial we can take a look at the freeze function. Now the freeze function is quite interesting. What it does is it allows us to technically render any MIDI track or any wave track with uh, effects and things like that applied to it but it's non-destructive so at any point we can call it back up and switch it back to its original state. One of the benefits of working with this is that if we've got any CPU intensive effects on our track and as we build up more complicated tracks with multiple effects on there you're going to tend to find that you may on slower systems suffer from some slowdown. So normally what you do is you render your track out but what that would do is that would make it uneditable in its original format. So for example if you created a MIDI drum track and then you want to go back and add some extra beats in it because you thought well I just need to make this a little bit more interesting you can't. You've rendered it, you've lost it without keeping the original MIDI file which kind of negates the whole point of rendering your track. So what we're going to do, like I say, is we're going to take a look at some of the ways we can use the freeze option in Reaper and show you how cool a function that actually is. So let's see how this works. So what we're going to start off with is I'm just going to come down and I've got a drum track already created. So I'm just going to solo that switch off everything else. So you can see it's just a typical MIDI drum track. So if I have technically want to sort of reduce my CPU usage because I don't want to have the uh, the effects that I'm running on this, which in this instance is uh, Easy Mix, sorry, Easy Drummer 2 and using the Metal Machine, we could easily, like I say, we could render that out, but then we would lose the ability to edit that if we want to come back and make changes later. So what we can do is right click on the track itself and we've got render freeze tracks and in there we've got a host of options. The first three are all to do with rendering and like I say that's a permanent way of making changes from it being MIDI and converting it over to a WAV file. The better option is the freeze option which is the second block of three options. So you can see we've got freeze tracks to mono, freeze tracks to stereo or freeze tracks to multi-channel. Now, obviously, this is going to come down to the way that you want to particularly work with your uh, the track that you're sort of looking to freeze. In this example, I might say, well, I'm quite happy with the mix that I've got and everything else. So all I want to do is render this down to a mono track. So if I do that, and just for argument's sake, that's what we'll use in this instance. I'll click on that. That'll give us a warning to say that, you know, there's a few other things going on. We'll say, yeah, we want to continue just because I want to show you the example. Now, what that's going to do is that's going to run through the track and it's going to effectively render that MIDI file but give us the ability to be able to jump back into its original format, its MIDI format, as opposed to, like I say, with the render where it's a one-way street. So we're going to let that run through now. It'll go through the entire song. At the moment, you can see it's running through at 5.3 times real time. So it's going to take a couple of minutes to run through. I'm going to let that complete. I'll pause the video and come back when it's finished. Okay, that's now finished. It's, re it's well, rendered the track out using the freeze function. As you can see, we now have a WAV file instead of our original MIDI file. So you can see everything is on there. It's locked, as you can see from this icon by here, and everything now is going to a sort of gray color. It's ghosted slightly. So that's telling you that that's in the, it's a state of freeze. So this is where the benefit comes in. Now let's just say, for example, I've gone off and I've done some other bits and pieces to my, my project and I come back and think, now I want to start editing my drums again. Ah, bugger, I've gone and I'll render them. But no, I haven't. I can just simply come back over my track, right click, render, freeze tracks, and come down to unfreeze and restore previous items and effects. So any effects that apply to it are all still there in its original format. So if I just click that, Give it a couple of seconds and there we go it switches back now and as you can see if i expand this i've got all of the effects that i originally had on there. in this instance it's an easy drummer too but you can see everything is in there exactly as i left it so i've got the benefit of reducing my cpu usage having a wave file there that i can work with if i want to but it's locked down and i can switch back into that at any point the other thing I can do is if I come back in and right click this and say render freeze tracks, what I can say is I can render this out to, if I wanted to, multi-channel. So let's just take a look at how that works. Like I say this is render, pre-fader, save, remove items and online effects. 
So that's going to get rid of all the things we don't need. It's going to take off any effects that are applied to it and just give us a condensed version of that track without all of the extra things on there. So if I hit that, you can see now we're dealing with a multi-channel. So all of the different drum samples that I've got in this instance, we've got 16 channels. You can see everything is going through and rendering in, in uh, well, faster than real time. So again, that's going to take a few minutes. I'm going to let that go through, pause the video, come back when it's finished and show you what's happened. Okay, so that's finished now. And even though you can't actually see the wave format on you, what we have is the 16 channels have now been effectively rendered out. And like I say, giving us the ability to switch back in. So the freeze function gives us all the benefits of rendering our tracks, frees up the CPU usage, gives us the ability to mix and do other things like that without the, the fact that we can never go back and change those things. So that's one way you can use it. But there's another way you can use this, and you can use this regardless of what kind of track you're creating. So I'm just going to undo this again. So right click, render and freeze tracks, come down to unfreeze, give it a couple of seconds, and there's our MIDI file back. Everything is back intact. So that's great. Now, I'm going to come back to a track. Now I've got three bass tracks on you, and if I expand, you can see that my one bass track has three different uh, effects plugins on there. So we've got the compressor, we've got Easy Mix, and I've got ReQ. Now let's just say, for example, I had lots and lots of instances of Easy Mix running on you, and I was finding my system was starting to develop pops and clicks, or everything was just starting to slow down a little bit, and I was having some sort of issues. Or it could just be a case that I'm happy with the sound, and I just want to render it out. But if I render it, I'm going to render everything. So what I need to do is I'm going to reorder these a second, put my instance of Easy Mix at the top, my compressor and my EQ second and third. Now what I can do is I can use the, the, the render function or the freeze function on the effects. So what will happen is it'll apply the effects to the track and sort of render that out. And like I say, this is all to do with freeze. I keep using the term render, but what we're doing is we're, we're rendering the track. We're creating a WAV file with that effect or effects applied to it. And visually overwriting that file. But where you use the freeze function, we don't overwrite it. We keep the other one. It just hides it out of the way that if we want to go back, we can just load it back in by unfreezing the track and all of the ability to edit all the different effects parameters and things like that are all still un intact underneath. So let's just say, for example, I want to render the track out or freeze the track, but I don't want to affect the compressor and the EQ. I still want to leave those where they are so I can tweak those and edit those should I need to during my mixing and mastering process. So what I can do is I can right click on the effects and I can say that I want to freeze the track. Now you can see I've got freeze track to mono up to last selected effects in stereo up to last effect, last selected effects and the same for multi-channel. Now the most important thing here is where it says up to last selected effects. So what it's saying is anything that comes after that selected effects won't be touched. They won't be frozen. They won't be rendered. Anything before that will be. So in this example, Easy Mix will be frozen or rendered, and anything afterwards, the compressor and the EQ won't be touched. So if I hit that, that's going to go through. That's going to run through the entire track. Apply in this in example the instance of Easy Mix but not the compressor and the EQ. They will remain untouched. So there we go. You can see now that my instance of Easy Mix has disappeared, but my compressor and my EQ are still there. And my track waveform has changed slightly because obviously this has technically frozen it or rendered it out. And now we have that version with the Easy Mix applied to it. So we freed up that instance of Easy Mix and we can do that on every single track just to give us more headroom on our computer. And exactly the same as before, if I close that down, I can just right click on the track, kind of render and freeze tracks and unfreeze that track to say re restore the previous item and effects. So do that. After a second or two, you can see now the waveform has changed back. And if I expand the effects panel, you can see now our instance of Easy Mix is back there. So we could come in, tweak, choose a different option. That's just some of the benefits that the freeze option gives you over the render option. The most important factor is the fact you can just call your track back up from its original state before you applied this freeze to it or this render to it. Well, I hope that's made sense. I hope you found it useful. I hope you can see some benefits to using this and you can use it in your projects. 
to a comment on this or feedback, please pop them in the, in the comment section below. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like the channel, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps you be kept up to date with all the latest add-ons and all the latest additions to the channel. Until next time, happy mixing.